I haven't learned this by heart. Well, I did. I mean, I did and I did. Uh, once upon uh, midnight, dreary, while I um, pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there, there came a tapping, as if someone, as of some one gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door to some visitor, I muttered, rapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah. Distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly, I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare, radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless, here, forevermore. And the sad, sad, silken, uncertain rustling of the purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. Huh. So that <laughs> now, you know, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance in my chamber door. Uh, some late visitor entreating entrance to my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness, I implore. But the fact is, I was napping when so gently you came rapping, when so faintly you came tapping, tapping my chamber door that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, nothing more. Peering deep into that darkness, peering. Long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dreamed before. But the silence was unbroken. In the stillness, not was spoken, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again, I heard a tap. Somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is. Let this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter. When with many a flirt and flutter in their step. 
a stately raven from the stately days of yore. Not the least obeisance made, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with me and a lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched above a bust of pops, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, nothing more. The raven, then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the stern and, and uh, uh, grave decorum of his countenance did war. Um, hmm. Though I press thee, short and shaven. Thou, said I, art sure no craven, ghastly grim, an ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what that lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, evermore. And much I marveled, this ungainly foul to hear discourse. So plainly, yet its answer, little meaning, little relevancy, or, or we cannot help agreeing that no living human being was ever blessed with seeing upon his chamber door, bird or beast, upon the sculpture bust above his door, with such a name as never more. But the raven, where's my beard? <laughs> With the raven, the raven, the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bus, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I, scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow, who believe me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. <laughs> Startled by the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken. <laughs> Doubtless said I, what it utters is its only stop in store. Caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster. Till his songs one burden bore, till the till uh, the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore never of never never more. But the rape still beguiling all my fancy into smiling straight. I wheel the cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust the door. And in the velvet. Cushion sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy and the fancy, thinking what this ominous bird, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of your mint in croaking evermore. Huh. And this I sat and gazed and guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl's fiery eyes. Now burned to my bosom's core. This and more I sat, divining, with my head at ease, reclining on the velvet, violet <coughs> lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet, violet lining that the lamplight gloating o'er she shall press. Nevermore. Then we thought the air grew denser, perfumed by some unseen censer from seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath led thee by these angels. 
kids sit the respite, respite, and the pente from thy memories of Lenore, quaff, oh quaff this kind of pente, and forget thy lost Lenore, quoth the raven, Lenore. <sighs> Prophet said, I think of evil. Prophet still a bird or devil. Whether tempter sent or tempest tossed thee on this shore, desolate and all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quote the raven nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil. By the heaven that brings above us, by the God, we both adore. <laughs> Tell the soul, the sorrow lady, if we're in the distant Eden, it shall clasp. Ah, radiant, sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quote the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of part, bird or free, that street of starting. Get thee back to the tempest, back to the plutonian shore. <laughs> Leave no black plume as a token of the lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust upon my door. Take thy feet from out my heart. Take thy form from off my door. Close the raven there. And the raven. Never fall. Still, still, still. On the pallet, bust the palace just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight or gleaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul within that shadow that is floating on the floor shall be lifted. Thank you.